This is the case of Diane Fossey, a.k.a. the Gorilla Girl. If you want to know more about this case, please continue watching. Diane Fossey, also known as the Gorilla Girl, was a famed primatologist researching in Rwanda's Bruguenere province and author of the best-selling book, Gorillas in the Mist. She was found dead in her isolated cabin at the Mount Viscogi research site on December 27, 1985. Diane had been killed by a machete blow to the face. And her killer has never been identified. Fossey developed a reputation as a kind woman among her followers and devotees. But to her enemies, she could be ferocious. Over the course of time in Rwanda, Fossey saw the devastating effects on poaching wildlife in the region. The Rwandan officials that were supposed to enforce the law were often complicit in the poaching themselves. Her focus began to shift from research to conservation, taking it upon herself to combat the poachers and malignity to protect the gorillas she studied. According to her former associate, Bill Weber, she tortured and kidnapped enemies. Indeed, much of her own writing confirms this. She also gained a reputation as a witch as she often used the locals' fear of magic to scare them away from poaching and hunting in her research zone. Despite the obvious enmity between Fossey and the local people, police initially looked at the members of her research team as their primary suspects. Right after her death, her entire staff was arrested and then slowly released for lack of evidence. Several months later, after having cleared him initially, Rwandan officials suddenly charged one of the researchers named Wayne McGuire with Fossey's murder. However, he was conveniently tipped off about the accusations and able to leave the country and return to America, where the charges were not pursued. Now, considering the fact that she was had gained a reputation as a witch, and someone who would kidnap and torture her enemies, the people of Rwanda could have felt like, okay, this woman has got to go because she's a witch, and the only way we can stop her is if we kill her so that we can get back to making our money by hunting and poaching these animals. But since she was studying them and trying to conserve their um that species of gorillas and their life they you know they felt threatened by her because they couldn't earn their money by poaching and she you know basically was like no if you guys come into my study zone and poach these animals i'm gonna do you like i do all of my other enemies which is kidnap and torture you so I'm pretty sure they felt like they had to stop her by any means necessary. Now, fortunately for Mr. McGuire, America did not pursue these charges. And for this reason, many people believe this resolution to be a conspiracy by the Rwandan investigators using McGuire as a scapegoat to protect the poachers and officials. In 2001, Mr. Proteus 
Mr. Z. Um, and we're just going to call him Mr. Z for purpose of this article because I cannot pronounce his name. Who had been govern who had been governor of the Ruginieri region in 1985 and later tied to the Rwandan genocide was accused of ordering her death. And this makes sense because, you know, officials and the locals saw her as a um as a witch and just because you are a high powered official does not exempt you from certain superstitions that you may have been taught and that you may have grown up with. So he, so he probably felt like he was going to have to get rid of her by any means necessary. And if that meant using his power as an official to do so, well, then that's what we're going to have to do because, you know, he felt like since he was a part of the poaching, she was affecting his money as well. Now, I don't have any proof of this. This is just a theory and an opinion of mine. Now, this case is still open to this day. And Fosse is buried in Rwanda with the gorillas in the graveyard at her research site. Now, I feel like the um, people of Rwanda, or should I say the government... Um, if they care even, should reopen this case and test that machete that she, um, that was used to kill her. They should test that for touch DNA and fingerprints. That is if they have that, you know, capability. And if they don't, they should send it off somewhere so that it can be tested for touch DNA and fingerprints. Um, to see if they can, you know, at least um, find out who her killer is, even if they're not able to be um, charged and prosecuted, simply because they might already be deceased as well. But I'm sure her family wants closure to this and also her friends and the people that loved her for the work that she was doing. So even if no one is able to be prosecuted or charged, at least give the family, friends, and loved ones and her followers some closure so they can know at least who did this to the woman that they loved. But unfortunately, guys, that brings me to the end of this video. If you like this video, please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up, a like, and please don't forget to leave me a comment down in the comment section below. Please make sure that it's positive. And if you are not already subscribed, please make sure you subscribe. Because liking the videos and subscribing to the channel as well as leaving a comment also helps this channel out. But until next time, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.